So common with making a building sitting on a site that is sloping is that your topography is not going to always match where you want your building opening to be. So in this case, in this example project, we have a partial basement and a first floor that are not matching up with or have grade actually passing through them. Um, in Revit 2024 and beyond, the topo surface tool has become the topo solid tool, which now produces a solid topography for a project that's uh, under massing insight. Previously with the topo surface tool, there used to be something called a building pad here. And you would use those to cut the topography so that it was not passing through your building and your building remained clear and had open spaces. In this case, we do not have the topo surface tool. We have to create a model in place component void and subtract it or cut it out of the existing topo surface. Um, one thing you'll notice if this is happening to you is if you have plans that have visibility graphics set up, let's say that you poche your walls black, you'll notice if that ever happens on a level that is completely on the ground, they will not be black. This is because if I turn this to a medium, you can actually see the earth is passing straight through it and it's overriding any um, visibility graphics you might have applied. So switching that back to course, that detail level. So what we want to do is let's start in the basement. We're going to make a component void that's going to subtract uh, the topo solid from the basement. So to do that, we go to the architecture tab, we go to component, and we click down and we go to model in place. And in this case, we are modeling a topo solid. So I hit OK. You can name it, we can call this basement. And now we are, we are going into drawing. We have our drawing tools activated. Uh, we, in this case, we will be doing a void form. You can see these are all the same as these. You can actually change these ones properties to avoid after you draw them. If you start with that, that's fine. I'm going to do avoid extrusion, the most basic type. Now I'm going to jump to the basement level and I'm going to use the rectangle um, drawing command and I'm going to make sure to capture the outside face of my exterior foundation walls. That way that's cut out of the train too, or the topography. So we're going to hit OK to finish drawing the extrusion. It now automatically extrudes one foot. Don't finish the model yet. This is where we want to jump back to our 3D view. We can see it's showing the full extents of that, even though I'm in a section box with this building. So what we want to do here, and sometimes it's hard to do this in shaded mode, so I am going to switch this over to uh, wireframe. You can see the orange portion is the void. Voids normally show orange in Revit if you're using the standard colors. So I'm going to align the bottom of this void with the bottom of the slab of the basement and the top of the void with the bottom of the slab of the ground floor. So align is here or AL. Say where you're going to first. I'm going to click on the bottom of that slab and I'm going to take the bottom of the void extrusion down. And then same thing, I'm going to hit escape, do a line again. And I'm going to find, okay, good, got to get a good angle of this slab here. So here's the bottom of the ground floor slab. I'm going to knock that down to that. Um, now, again, you want to, you, I almost did it. You want to go and hit finish model, but not yet. You actually have to tell it to cut out of the topography. So you go to cut. We select the topography we're going to cut out of. Here's the topo solid on that and say remove this and you could see now we could finish it and just look at what we did so if I go back to shaded view that I typed SD but you can also get there from here we now have a basement that does not have topography through it you can see there's a little sliver that's passing through the ground level because we're only going up to the bottom of that slab and you can see more is passing through over here so next step, we take out the ground level. You can all do this out of one cut, but I'm going to make it two so we can see through the control, see the tools twice. So architecture, we're going to go to component, model in place. 
and topo solid, name it. And now we're going to jump to the ground floor. And just as before, void, void extrusion. We're going to do the rectangle command again. I'm going to do all of this. Let's just get everything. Snap there. You can always set the height if you want to make it a little taller than one foot. It defaults to one foot. I type in six. We get six feet. That might make it easier to see. Uh, finish the extrusion. And I'm going to go right back to my 3D view. Now we can see where we are. So we're going up from the top of the slab. Um, I am again going to jump to wireframe just to make it a little bit easier to see. And we're going to do the align command. We're going to say you're going from the bottom of this slab. I'm, I'm hit, pushing the tab button here. The cycle through when I'm close to clicking till I get what I want. And then I click on it and click on that. And now it's to the bottom of that slab. And now I really don't need to do a lot with the top because we just want to cut everything within this perimeter out of the topo solid. So you can actually just raise that up high. Uh, not going to finish model. Almost did it again. We're going to cut from this topo surface this void. And now we'll finish the model. And we're going to switch back off wireframe to shaded view to see what we did. So here, it is no longer cutting through our slab. It's no longer showing inside of our building. We've now gotten our topo surface, our topo solid, uh, cut in a way that works with our building. Now, just to show you, if you have to come back and edit this, you always do. You're always moving walls and stuff. It's really tricky to click on the topo surface cut. So if we want to edit this again, we have to somehow grab that void. So you can ta hit tab. A lot of times, like I just did there, you're going to select the topo solid. So I'm tabbing through. It's really hard to get this thing. The trick to kind of getting them is I know I have a void in this basement. I know I've avoided the slab. If I do something like this, I can use my filter command. See, I have two topo solids. The way I selected that, that would only have selected the basement one and the site. So I'm going to say, don't select anything else. Keep my two topo solids. And then I'm going to hold the shift button down and deselect the site. Now I know I've got, even though it's hardly showing me anything, it's very hard to grab these things. Now I know I've got that basement void. I can do edit in place and it's active again. Now I can select it and I can make changes to it again. And I can go to wireframe and we can always edit the extrusion and we're right back to where we were when we originally made this. So we would cancel out of that, but that is the best way to kind of grab these. Um, one other little tip is if you do something like this and come here, you might see that I have three topo solids selected, even though I thought I only got the site and the void. The Any kind of um, regions on your topo solid, any kind of, um, yeah, any, any type of site component in place uh, region will also count as a topo solid. So you can hold down shift and click. So, and hold down shift and click on the site. And now I should have, again, this would be my ground floor void. There it is. But you can see how difficult it is to, to get that guy to activate so that you can actually edit again if something changes with your building and you need to increase, decrease, remove. You can just delete this and do it again. But that's, that's how to work with cutting out of your topo solid in Revit 2024 or later.